joining me today on So What with Sulky. Today is March 1st. Can you believe it? March 1st already. And that means it's the beginning of National Quilting Month. So we are going to dive into all things quilting from free motion quilting to hand quilting to piecing and quilting. We're going to be bringing you lots of fun quilting projects, um, quilts, quilty pillows, quilty wall hangings, all kinds of those things so that we can really, you know, practice our skills and also learn something new. All right, I'm not getting any uh, chat here, and I know that some of you are on already, so let me just kind of fix some things while um, we're waiting for some people to join us. Let's see. There we go. Now everyone's saying hi. Okay, fantastic. So today, speaking of free motion, we are going to talk about all things free motion. We just published a blog post this morning that is free motion quilting FAQs with Eric Drexler. How many of you know Eric Drexler? Give me a thumbs up. Eric Drexler is a national educator for Sulky, and he really travels the U.S. and uh, presents lots of workshops and seminars for guilds, as well as on the road at sewing and quilting shows across the nation. So you may have run into Eric in the past or taken a class from him online. Um, we've got a lot of in-depth courses with Eric at SewDaily.com. You can find them there. I also linked to a few um, on the blog post that published today. So you can head on over to blog.sulky.com after today's live video and get all of the information um, about Eric and where he teaches. And of course, you know, while we have gone uh, virtual in a lot of ways, um, things are kind of ramping up. And as you know from last week, um, I attended QuiltCon and there are a few sewing shows that are kind of emerging from virtual and going in person again. Uh, so you may be able to catch Eric at um, an original sewing and quilt expo. I know there's one um, in Lake or in, um, oh my gosh, I lost it. It's not Lakeland, Florida, but um, it's in, um, I think near Atlanta, actually. I could be wrong. I apologize. You know, I have a lot of things to talk about today, um, so I completely lost that one. But at any rate, you can find Eric around. Um, and also, if you belong to a guild, we offer guild programs at sulky.com. You can find more about them. And you can sign up to have um, Eric come teach in person. And we have some exciting things on the horizon because we are going to be offering some virtual guild events this year. So if you're interested in that, you can also email us at info at sulky.com. We can get you some more information there and we will be rolling out that those programs very, very soon. So um, those are some exciting education offerings. Also, uh, before we get into our free motion quilting FAQs, please be aware that as it is National Quilting Month, we have a great sale that's going on. So 20% off up to a $50 um, uh, purchase, 25% off up to $99.99 purchase, and then 30% off a $100 purchase and up. So these are great, great deals. So if you're interested in grabbing up some of the uh, great things I'm going to be talking about today. Be sure to write down these coupon codes. You can also find them right on the homepage at sulky.com. So make sure to put in these coupon codes when you're making your purchases today. Uh, this ends on Monday. So you have a little while to uh, use these coupons. Just be sure to put in those coupon codes so you can grab up these great, great deals. All right. So speaking of online virtual education, how many of you have already registered for our In the Hoop greeting cards embroidery sewing session with Julie Treve of Designs by Juju? This uh, session is going active on March 
8th. So next Tuesday. So in one week, you will have access to this entire session as long as you register for it. You will also get a an exclusive greeting card design collection from Designs by Juju and five bonus frame designs that you can use to create your own greeting cards. And Julie goes through the whole process of creating cardstock designs, felt designs. Um, these are basically uh, greeting cards that you add a piece of felt to, kind of like applique in the hoop. So it's really cool and it gives the card some unique texture. She also goes through creating a quilty card as well as how to use software to create your own designs starting with those bonus frame designs. So there are tons of videos. Um, you will get instruction from the digitizer and designer herself. You get access to our greeting cards community, which is kind of like um, its own Facebook group, um, but you'll find it on our education platform once you register for this event. So you can go in there, post pictures of your progress, talk to each other and fellow um, sewers who are taking the session as well. And we pop in there to also interact with you constantly once the session begins. So if you have a question, you can post it there. You can uh, add an image really easily if you're having a problem with something. And then that will allow us to really give you the great support that you need while you are on your greeting cards embroidery journey. Okay. <laughs> so lots of people are saying they have signed up. They're waiting for their kit to arrive. Fantastic. Um, the kit, that's another thing we need to talk about. So if you want to grab up the kit for this embroidery session, and I highly suggest you do because oddly, uh, these blank greeting cards that we have included with your sulky thread and stabilizer and felt, the greeting cards themselves are in very short supply out in the universe. So uh, oddly enough, it's very difficult to find these pre-folded cards. So we have packaged six of them for each kit. So you will get enough to make six cards. And then, of course, you will have lots of thread and stabilizer to use if you want to make additional cards. So this is a great deal. Once you sign up for the session for $19.99, you will then also get a coupon code that you can use for the kit that drops the kit price down to $39.99. So as a bonus for registering for the session, you will get this kit at an amazing price. So be sure to uh, get your confirmation email once you sign up and write down that coupon code so that you can plug it into your sulky cart when you purchase the kit. All right, Robin says, I have received my kit. Dawn says, I have received my kit. All right, you all are ahead of the game. And it is going to be a great class, Catherine. It, uh, I worked with Julie on the videos and the content and making sure that you get so much information. I think that you will really think it's a great deal, um, especially these exclusive designs. You know, um, I just, I absolutely love Designs by Juju Designs. Okay, so make sure you are registered for that because again, it goes live next Tuesday. Now, that being said, I just want everyone to know it is not a live event like our video casts and webcasts. It's all on demand. So even if you're unavailable on the 8th, once it's March 8th, you'll have access to every single lesson within the session you can watch, pause, rewind, fast forward, advance through all of the lessons within the session at your leisure. So how you want to learn all of this and when you have time to sew is completely up to you. Okay, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, last week when I was talking about QuiltCon, um, I showed off this I Love Quilting zippered pouch. And you all went crazy afterwards asking me where this is. Well, you can get this right at sulky.com. And there are a couple of options. You can purchase this alone. 
and it's hard sided and has a zipper closure. And what's great about you could see I have like all my threads and things that I was working on in the booth um, for our demo table. I have a little thimble and I was doing a lot of hand sewing. Um, so it fits lots of thread. Mine's kind of disorganized, but it also fits a rotary cutter. Um, a standard size rotary cutter will fit in here. It also fits a can of KK2000. Fits right on in here. Now I will say if you have the KK in here, you won't be able to also fit a rotary cutter. So you gotta kind of pick and choose what you wanna store in there. But this is so handy for on the go, for handwork. If you like to do hand quilting, let's say on your couch or something, you can bring all that you need with you and then take it back to your sewing room. And it's just a great little hard-sided case. I saw everybody walking around with these at QuiltCon. Um, we also have packaged up this hard-sided case with some thread, some quilting needles, and a can of KK2000, which are really great beginner quilting supplies. So if you're looking to get into quilting, this is a great little kit that you can grab up. It comes with six spools of sulky 50 weight cotton thread. I'm going to be talking a lot about that today because Eric really loves it for uh, piecing and free motion work as well. Um, so we're going to talk about thread weight, needles. We're going to talk about his favorite tools for free motion quilting. And if you have questions about free motion quilting, please put them in the comments and we will also talk about those. But I wanted to bring this cute beginner quilting kit to your attention because everyone was asking, where do I get this? Oh yeah, it also comes with that one by six clear ruler. I have about three of these in my sewing room. I have one near me at all times. Um, I use it as a seam gauge. Um, I use it for quick marking. Um, it's just like one of the greatest things, relatively inexpensive, clear ruler with lots of markings on it for you. And this fits right in that case as well. So all these little tools that you can have on hand when you are doing your quilt projects and when we bundle something like this into a kit, you get it at a great price. So I wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Okay, another great kit if you are diving into quilting or free motion work is this doodle quilting kit. And I wanna make sure I'm using the right name for it. I know I wrote it in the description of today's post. Um, so let me just be on the safe side and make sure I'm calling it. It's called the Quilt Doodle Thread Assortment. It has some spools of cotton thread, a spool of 30 weight blendables, a spool of fun metallic thread. So all of these different thread types and weights you can experiment with and practice your free motion. So they are also an accompaniment to a free webinar that we have had at sewingonline.sulky.com. It's one of our legacy webinars. It's from quite a few years ago, but I reviewed it the other day and the content is spectacular. Um, it really talks about kind of just letting your mind go and not worrying about perfection and really doodling on a piece of stabilizer or even a piece of paper to then transfer to the top of a quilt block and then going over it with thread. So this kit allows you to have fun and try out a lot of different thread weights, which we will be talking about today. This is also our uh, special gift for one of you watching today. So this is what I have chosen for today's freebie for one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, liking, sharing, all of those good things uh, on today's live stream. So you could win this thread assortment and it is valued at $32.14. So that is a great little thing to grab up to, especially if, you know, we get kind of in a habit of choosing the thread type and weight that we always use, right? So if we do machine embroidery, we probably have the whole line of Sulky Rayon Thread or Sulky Polydeco Thread. 
if we do a lot of quilting, maybe we have the whole line of sulky 50 weight cotton and steel thread. Uh, if we do a lot of uh, free motion work, maybe we really love sulky 30 weight thread and we hardly ever deviate because that's the thread we love and that's the thread that works best for us. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a great idea to kind of see what else is out there. You know, when I was at QuiltCon, so many people came to our booth saying, what do I use for hand quilting? I want to dive into that. Or what is great for free motion work? Um, I haven't done that in so long. And I show them the blendables and they're just amazed that this even exists, that there is a thread that is randomly dyed every two and a half to five inches across that thread length. So they don't get this repeating pattern of colors when they are straight line quilting, matchstick quilting, or even free motion style. So, um, you know, it's really eye-opening to just kind of try something new. So this is a great little kit that is, um, or assortment rather, that gives you a chance to try metallics, try the blendables, try different weights, and see what you like for the quilts that you create. So as I mentioned, that kit went along with our free motion doodling webinar, um, which is a great way. It's a great webinar if you've never tried free motion or if you have, but you weren't really satisfied with the results. This doodling kind of technique um, is really like hand drawing a design right? And then going over it with stitches. So you're not just free motion stitch or free motion quilting sort of blindly, you know? Um, and I'm going to go over a couple of tips that Eric has as well in our FAQs blog post um, that helps you do this doodling technique um, and just some ideas for making that easier. But I wanted to bring this to your attention because if you're going to sewingonline.sulky.com, and you're registering for that embroidery session, you can add this free legacy webinar to your library absolutely for free. Any of our legacy webinars are freebies. And then of course you can add any of our video casts and webcasts as, as well. But a lot of the times with our legacy webinars, you know, when you're searching through all the education offerings, uh, you have to scroll down, down, down because there are so, so many of them. So I wanted to bring this one to your attention today since we're talking about free motion and of course about our great thread kit and that doodle quilting designs um one of those designs was featured in the free webinar but this book that we have at sulky.com has tons of doodling designs so if you're not super confident about your own um you know drawing skills or doodling skills this book comes with tons, 180 quilting designs that you can transfer to quilt blocks. So you can transfer those using Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. You can print them out or copy them onto a sheet of Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. Stick that right to your finished quilt block um, and doodle around free motion style. So this is a great resource as well. This book, again, is available at sulky.com. Um, there are a few in stock that you can still get. And then we also have a kit that includes this book, the thread assortment I was just talking about, and a pack of Sulky Stick and Stitch. Sulky Stick and Stitch are those printable sheets, just like Sulky Fabris, Sticky Fabra Salvi. All right, so we have three different options. You can grab up the thread kit alone, you can grab up the book alone, or you can grab up those bundled together with that uh, stick and stitch stabilizer that you can use for transferring doodle quilting designs, free motion quilting designs, Zentangle designs. These are all kind of free motion techniques. All right. So here we have Eric... Um, he's teaching, you know, as people are watching him do free motion. And then that close up is what he's doing. So he's kind of doing free motion bubbles, right? And you can see he's got an open toe free motion spring 
action foot, okay? So this is really similar to a machine embroidery foot. Um, a lot of machine brands, machine, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm losing my words, machine manuals, right? They will tell you that you can use either an embroidery foot or they might come with an additional free motion or spring-loaded open toe foot like this. So you want to be sure to use a foot like that when you're doing free motion so that it's rising up atop the fabric surface a little bit while you're sewing. You'll notice that when the needle goes in the fabric, that embroidery foot kind of raises up just a little bit to allow you that room to move your quilt underneath. The same goes for under the fabric. You need to make sure to lower your feed dogs. The feed dogs are the little um, scratchy little things that come up off of your machine bed and grip your fabric while you're sewing so that you're not pushing your fabric through the machine. Those feed dogs are actually moving it kind of like this. So when you lower your feed dogs, that allows you complete freedom to move your quilt under uh, the presser foot and over the top of the machine bed. Now there are a couple of other products that Eric really loves for free motion. There was a question um, that he gets asked all the time and that is, do I need something slippery um, on top of my machine bed so that my quilt can glide over the top of it easier? Um, and let me just go to this part. Okay, do you recommend placing slippery items on the bed of the machine for free motion quilting? So he says, I definitely see the benefit of a slippery surface under the quilt. It makes things move much easier. There is a product that he recommends called Supreme Slider. And I link to that in the blog post. It's actually like a kind of plastic looking rectangle and you put it on your machine bed kind of right next to um, your presser foot so that the excess quilt has a, a slipperier surface for you to move around. I have never even heard of this thing so I did a little bit of research on it and there are quite a few out there. Um, I linked to one of those and um, he does say that it's slippery on the top and has a rubberized mat on the bottom. So you place that rubbery part on the bed of your machine. And he says the only downfall of this product is that it doesn't like to stay down, especially if you're working on a larger quilt, because it looks like it's maybe, I don't know, four inches by eight inches or so. So it's not very large because, you know, a lot of people don't have super large machine beds anyway. Um, so he says to just kind of take some painter's tape and tape down the corners where you want it on your machine. And then there will be no shifting of it, especially if you're working on a larger quilt. So he likes that product. There's also another product that goes on the entire machine bed. So not just to the left of your needle, but under your entire machine bed. And it's called the Quilting Slider Mat Grid. And this is by So Steady. And I also link to that in the, in the blog post um, that I'm talking about. This kind of looks like a rotary cutting mat, but there's a little kind of square or rectangle cutout where your needle goes down. So you place this kind of slippery rotary cutter mat on your machine bed, which also extends your machine bed a little bit, placing that rectangle where it needs to go um, under your presser foot. And that allows you a larger surface for your free motion work and gives you a little bit of a slicker surface to work off of. Plus it has grids on it, like a rotary cutter. So if you're trying to follow straight lines um, or even angles, while you're doing free motion, that can really help out as well. All right. Another question he gets asked is, why should I grab and hold on to my quilt rather than pressing down on it when I'm quilting? So uh, he says, 
If you press down, you're going to create too much friction and it's harder to move the quilt under the presser foot. So if you have your hands flat on the quilt and you're moving it around this way, he says you can have a lot of kind of push and pull with your uh, top thread and bobbin thread. Whereas if you kind of roll up the edges and hold on to it like this, almost like your hands are creating a hoop, right? And you have a little bit of tension on it, that allows you greater movement and uh, your stitches can kind of form uh, much easier and they look more balanced. So I thought that was an interesting question as well. Um, also the importance of going slow when you're free motion quilting. Um, you know, he says, even if you're uh, experienced with free motion and you've done quite a bit of quilts free motion style, going slow can't hurt. So he recommends to use the controls on your sewing machine to slow down your stitches rather than having you control it with your foot. Because when we're doing free motion, we have so many parts of our body involved in this activity. And so by just slowing your machine down, um, if you have that function on your machine, of course, uh, that can allow you to kind of put your foot to the floor and kind of forget about that. And your speed is controlled um, by that function on your machine. So you can kind of get a feel for how long your stitches, how short they are, um, moving around curves and that type of thing, and still go slow, even if you wanna put your foot to the floor. So I thought that was a good recommendation. He also says, if you're stippling or meandering, it's okay to go a little bit faster. Um, but if you're tracing around a print or using a template for free motion quilting, he really recommends going slow, even if you're pretty confident, um, just to make sure that your stitches per inch are consistent across your quilt. All right, some questions are coming in. Um, oh, Madeline, thank you. Madeline says, I use a slippery mat on the bed of my machine. I do love it, but Eric is right. It can come up with larger quilts. So that's a um, good to know. Uh, maybe you want to try that tape trick that he's talking about. Um, just some painter's tape, something that will be easily removed off of your machine bed when you're done. All right. So I want to go into the great products that uh, Eric recommends because, you know, if there's a notion or a ruler or something like that that's going to help me with a certain technique, um, you know what? Why not use it and make our lives easier? They are invented for a reason. And for the most part, I find that these great tools are... Uh, you know, in, I don't know if invented is the right word, but, um, you know, brought to the industry from quilters and sewers like us who really saw the need for it and said, I have, I want this for my own self. So I'm going to put, I'm going to create this and get it out in the industry. So you have to respect that. All right. So one of the things Eric talks about is using gloves when you are doing free motion work. Now you may remember um, back in November, I did a video cast at our education site called Wilderness Wonder. And we made some amazing animal quilts. And I did a free motion technique as one of the quilting options for our wall hanging or pillow project. Now, if you will recall, we did a deer, an elk, and a moose. And you could decide which animal you wanted to applique and quilt onto a larger piece. And I tried out these gloves for the very first time when I was doing the free motion work. And let me just tell you, I really thought it was a game changer, um, especially when working with a larger piece and, you know, gripping your quilt along the edges. I just, they have grippies on the bottom and then they have touch screen fingers. So you don't have to take your gloves off to kind of mess with your stitches or change to a decorative stitch or whatever you want to do on your machine screen while you're doing your free motion, you can just leave them on. And then as you can see, um, these fingers are open. Um, so they're kind of like fingerless, fingerless gloves, but just on these two fingers. And that allows you just kind of the freedom to move around a little bit easier. 
I don't know, they're, they're expertly made. We have them in three sizes, small, medium, and large. I'll tell you what Eric says about using gloves, um, quilting gloves. So he says, I personally don't use gloves when I'm sewing, driving, or gardening, <laughs> but I do see the benefit in them as they help grip the quilt as you sew. He says, especially if you're a beginner, gloves might be just the thing to help you gain confidence when you're free motion quilting. And if you're a seasoned quilter, he says, if you have arthritis setting in or it's hard for you to grip things for a longer period of time, you know, during the quilting process, that these gloves can actually help with that as well. So good to know. And these have like a Velcro closure on them. That's where the little, um, uh, you know, swan motif is. It's a Velcro closure. So you can kind of adjust the fit as well around um, your wrists. So I, I just can't say enough good things about these. They were also recommended to us um, from NJ Kinman, who is a wonderful quilter in the industry. She designed all of the birthstone quilts, uh, quilt patterns that we have at sulky.com. And she said, Ellen, you got to try these gloves. And I tried them and loved them. And now we have them at sulky.com. So I, I think, you know, it, again, as Eric says, if you haven't done free motion before, why not start out with the tools that are going to help you succeed? And, you know, if you don't like wearing gloves when you're quilting and, you know, you've done free motion for a while and you got the hang of it, then maybe you don't need the gloves. But they could help if you have arthritic hands or, um, you know, it's hard for you to grip things for a longer period of time. So keep that in mind. All right. Let's go to thread. Um, thread is, you know, is a big thing. Um, of course. And again, when I was at QuiltCon, lots of people talking about thread weight and what is suitable for this and that and the other thing. And what I think is interesting about free motion is um, a lot of people get into the habit of, I need a 50 weight thread. I need sulky 50 weight cotton. That's it. That's all I'm going to use. Um, that just glides through my machine. It kind of disappears into the quilt. Um, you can use a neutral and some neutrals will complement um, a lot, a wide range of colors. Um, and so a lot of people are in kind of this habit of sulky 50 weight cotton, sulky 50 weight cotton. So it was really interesting when I was showing people the 30 weight cotton thread. So the smaller the number, the smaller the weight, the thicker the thread's going to be. So when you're using a 30 weight versus a 50 weight cotton, and I'll, I'll just tell you right now in the, in the blog post, Eric likes to use all of these thread weights. I'm going to be talking about the 50 weight cotton, the 30 weight cotton, and even 12 weight cotton, which is much thicker than the other two previously mentioned. Um, so I will say he likes using all three of those because they have different looks that you're going to get, right? So obviously that 58 thread's going to really kind of blend into your quilt and you won't really see the stitching. You'll see the quilting pattern, but you won't really see those that stitching. Now 30 weight, you're going to start to see the stitching and you'll you want colors that coordinate with the quilt. You may swap out colors for different portions of the quilt block um, so that it either matches or contrasts uh, the quilt. Uh, you also can do the 30 weight blendables, like I mentioned. So you have a lot of different colors in just one spool of thread and you use that same one across the entire quilt. That's a totally different look. Now you can even go to 12 weight uh, cotton and those really pop off of the surface. And I've also done a quilt with the 12 weight fillet, which is our acrylic thread that has sort of a, I have it right here. It has like a fuzzy texture to it. So these, I don't know if you can really see the fuzz, but it's meant to be there, right? Can you see it kind of popping off of the thread length? So this kind of creates a more sort of vintage style look, or if you're doing, let's say a flannel quilt or um, incorporating some more plushier uh, fabrics, 
you might consider using the 12 weight fillet for free motion quilting because you're going to get kind of the same texture or feel from the thread that you do with the fabric. So those just are some things to think about. Now, really the only difference between using these threads is how much do you want the quilting to be seen and what size needle you are using. So I like to grab up the quilting assortment pack, and that's actually what Eric recommends as well, because you can use the 7511 quilting needles for piecing or for that 50 weight cotton thread quilting if you want to do that. And then you can use the 9014 needles that are in the assortment pack for those heavier weight threads, the 30 weight uh, solids and blendables. So your needle size really is determined by your thread weight. A lot of people say, oh, I'm using a thicker fabric, so I need a larger needle. Well, you don't need a larger needle eye, right? You might just need a larger or a sharper point needle. So your fabric type is really determining the type of needle that you're using. Jeans, stretch, um, universals, quilting, jersey, right? The size, 8012, 9014, is determined by your thread weight. Okay, so I hope that that makes a little bit uh, more sense. So Karen is saying, what size needle do you use for the fillet? So I have gotten away with using a 9014 with the 12 weight threads. However, it doesn't give you a lot of room in the needle eye for any kind of friction that the thread might produce if you're doing uh, fast stitching, right? So if you are a free motion pro and you just whiz away um, under the uh, presser foot and you're going kind of fast, I would recommend going up to a 100 needle. So a 100 slash 16 needle. Um, and you might want to just grab that anyway. Uh, you want to make sure that your thread can can kind of glide across the needle without a lot of friction. And if I have one here, I can show you a trick that I learned from the great Sue Hausman. I have shown it on this show before, but it, perhaps you haven't seen it. So this I just happen to have next to me is a size 7010 Jersey needle. And I'm going to show you the 50 weight cotton I have right here. So with 50 weight, since it is such a lightweight thread, you want to go with a 70 or a 75 needle. And I'm just going to cut a length of this thread. So if you are unsure if your needle size is accurate for your thread, go ahead and thread it while it's off of the machine. Just thread one of the needles with a length of thread. And then you're gonna take the sides of, or the ends of your thread and run your needle across it. Now, if it glides across without too much friction and it doesn't go too fast, this needle size is absolutely perfect for this needle. But if I were to go up to, what do I have here? Let's see, if I were to go up, I mean, I don't even know if I can thread this needle with 12 weight, um, but I have some next to me, so we will see. I think the thread is gonna be too thick for the needle eye for me to even thread it, but we will try. So you just want to, yeah, I can't even thread this needle through the eye. So we already know that there's no way we can use the 7010 needle with this thread. And a lot of the times when you have that auto uh, needle threader on your machine, for those of us lucky enough to have that feature, a lot of the times that auto needle threader can really push the thread through the needle eye, even though it might may have struggled to do so. And it's hard for you to see because it's so automatic. So a lot of the times a thicker thread will fit into a, a smaller needle even if you maybe shouldn't be sewing with it. All right, so now I have the 7010 needle. 
and I have a 30 weight attached to it. And do you see how it won't even glide down the thread? It is literally stuck. So we know that that 30 weight thread, we need to go up a size or two. Um, I usually use a 9014 with a 30 weight thread. The 8012 kind of um, sticks and I have to kind of nudge it down the thread, okay? So that's a really good tip if you're unsure um, or if you have, um, you know, swapped out a needle, let's say you're going from machine embroidery to quilting or machine embroidery to regular sewing and you've swapped out a needle and you've set it next to your machine. We have all done this. I know I'm not the only one. And all of a sudden you have a little pile of needles over here and you have no idea what they are, what size they are. It's too hard to read. Am I right? I mean, I got to get so close here to see what size it is. So if you're unsure, you could put your thread on there and see if it's an adequate size. So I just thought that tip from the great Sue Hausman was, I mean, one of the best things that improved my sewing and just my knowledge of matching needles with thread weight. So I hope you all find that useful. Okay. Let's see. Also, um, here's another question that was, uh, sent to Eric. Do you recommend anything to put on thread to make it easier to sew? He says, I love using sewer's aid when I'm using a sticky backed stabilizer or when I'm using metallic threads. Um, he says he doesn't put the sewer's aid on the thread itself. Instead, he puts a tiny little bit right on the needle. So you know how some people will they're threading the needle in the machine. Maybe they don't have an auto uh, needle threader and they kind of moisten the end of the thread to get it through the needle eye, right? You kind of go like this and kind of moisten it a little bit so that you can get it through the needle eye. Well, if you try actually lubricating or moistening the needle eye instead, you will have much greater success. So give that a try. Let me know. Your life may just have been changed just like that. <laughs> so same goes with the sewer's aid. Instead of putting it on the thread end, he puts it on the needle eye. And that way it's kind of lubricating the thread all the while while you're sewing because a little goes a long way. Whereas if you were just to put it on the needle end or on the thread end, that end of thread is going to be long gone by the time you know, maybe you really need it while you're going across the, the quilt. So that's a really good tip as well. And like I said, a little goes a long way. This little bottle of sewer's aid, we have it at sulky.com. It's inexpensive. It's a great tool for a lot of things. And again, he says when using metallic threads. So if you are the lucky one who wins this doodle quilting thread assortment, see that metallic thread up here? It's sulky sliver in that great sort of rainbow array of colors. Sewer's Aid can really help when using metallic threads because there's so much friction that happens with that metallic thread while it's passing through the needle. And that little bit of lubrication on the needle eye kind of calms down the metallic thread while you're sewing it. So give that a try too. Eric really swears by that product and uses it for so many things. You'll see it pop up in almost every single class and video that he does. Um, so it's a great uh, notion to help make things easier. Okay, so transferring designs. Let's get to transferring designs. I think um, a big learning curve with free motion quilting is people don't trust themselves, I don't either, to create a really beautiful design uh, while you're just under the presser foot. So I like to cheat a little bit. <laughs> And I will plot out my quilting before I ever get that quilt under the presser foot. And you can do this a number of ways. You can obviously transfer a fun design um, that you find from that doodle quilting book I just showed. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of other resources that you can trace and use and practice with. Um, but a great tool for tracing your design is that 
stick and stitch, or it's also called sticky fabra solvi. You want to be sure to get, um, you know, if you're printing out a design that is that can fit on eight and a half by 11 paper, you can get those printable sheets, those stick and stick stitch sheets. If you want to plot out your quilting on a larger quilt or larger piece, sticky fabra solvi also comes by the roll. You can get it in two sizes on the roll. You can also get it on the bolt, of course, too. So what you can do is put a larger piece of sticky fabra solvi on the surface of your whole quilt once it is sandwiched together with your batting and backing. And you can either draw your uh, free motion quilting plan uh, right onto that sticky fabra solvi surface and then it sticks there, right? So you can just roll up your quilt and free motion over those lines. And then when your quilt is complete, you've added the binding, you can wash your quilt and all of the sticky fabra solvi washes away. It is the greatest way to transfer a quilting design really of any kind or hand embroidery work. And it just really takes the fear out of that free motion process. Um, I do have a picture of someone using it. I just need to find the right one here. Nope, not the right one. <laughs> here we go. So the sticky fabric solvi has a fabric-like side, and then the opposite side has a paper release sheet that you will remove to reveal that sticker stickiness. So then just stick it to the right side and go over your lines and you know, if you if you miss some of the lines or go outside the lines, you can just go over it again and make it really sketchy looking quilting um, or just don't worry about it. You're probably close enough and it's going to look great. So what I like about doing this is if, if you have a quilt block, this is one that I'm working on that I'm going to show off next Tuesday. Um, if you're working on a quilt block like this log cabin block, you could put your sticky fabric solvi on here. And you can draw something inside of your center block, draw something along your borders, and you can have different quilting all around this block relatively easily. And you can go from the center to the borders, to the sides, to the cornerstones, and really not stress about, you know, where you are. I mean, I just get kind of dizzy sometimes. I have to stop what I'm doing and look at it from afar. So it's great to plot that out ahead of time and use that stabilizer, which again, it's a stabilizer. So it's also going to make sure that your quilt top is nice and flat and, you know, stable while you're working with it. So it's a really, really great stabilizer to use for free motion work. Um, someone also had a question, do you recommend using stabilizer? So he does recommend using that sticky fabric solvi as a design transfer method, as well as just a plain old stabilizer to help you um, glide everything under the presser foot. And then let's see, also, um, you know, if you're quilting a lightweight quilt and adding loads of thread to it, you may need to add a stabilizer to sort of add thread count to that fabric so that the thread has more to grasp onto in order to create a balanced stitch for you. So Tender Touch is a great stabilizer for that because it's a silky, really soft stabilizer. So it's not gonna mess with the hand or drape of that lightweight fabric. That's a great stabilizer. Or Soft and Sheer, if you have a little bit, um, maybe a cotton sateen type weight fabric, um, uh, Soft and Sheer Extra is a fusible. So it's gonna remain with the quilt over time. Um, if you're working with delicate or vintage fabrics, it's a great idea to stabilize those so that, you know, when you do wash the quilt and use it a lot, um, you are reinforcing those delicate fabrics and helping them last longer. All right, so I think I've gotten through most of Eric's questions, but again, you can read them all on the blog post. And I wanted to kind of give you an overview of some of his free motion work to just inspire you to go and try some free motion today or this week. And this is a, a Zentangle technique. How many of you have heard of Zentangle? 
So it's kind of like doodle quilting, um, but it's really like creating a larger, um, how do you describe it? Um, it's, it's creating a lot of different patterns in different blocks of designs. Um, and so here you can see these really great looking bubbles and hearts and um, the border with the checkerboard. This is all done free motion style. Isn't that amazing? And this is actually done, I believe, with 40 weight rayon thread. So you get that really rich color and sheen coming off of it. Don't be afraid to use something you would even use for machine embroidery to embellish your quilts uh, because they, like I said, all of these different thread weights and types have different properties and are going to produce different looks. Here is some more of that Zentangle work and these repeating patterns in these blocks of designs. And it's just really, really neat. He's so, so talented. Here is some more, you could see those puzzle pieces and filled in, you know, decorative stitches. You can add decorative stitches to straight line free motion quilting as well. Don't be afraid to add these design elements into your works of art. Um, you know, as you can see, these are all done on just a plain white fabric. And then you're creating your own design using thread. So really, really beautiful stuff here. And then what I find interesting about this, so you can see these, um, these sort of half circle rectangles, right? Intertwining with each other. That is done with the blendables thread, okay? And then those leaves are also done with the blendables thread. So you see how you can get, it looks like he swapped out so many different thread colors, but he's really using those blendable threads in different shades. And it just creates such a different looking design than the ones I showed you previously. It has so much more dimension. It looks so much more impressive. And it's really just that he swapped out blendables for a solid color thread. So this same design, I'm now going to show you in black and white. Um, and you can see how different it looks. And he added some different decorative stitches along that um, sort of serpentine line, if you will. Um, this one has, you know, these kind of butterfly flower stitches. This one has um, those diamonds in it. So totally different look doing this in all black thread. So that's just another really unique way to use your free motion skills. Um, you know, once you really get the hang of it and do these repeating patterns. All right. So I wanted to share with you, if you really want to go try this out today, I thought it would be great to show you, um, and sort of, sort of beginner, I mean, a confident beginner, you can do this um, project that is already on the Sulky blog. These are Zentangle Easter eggs that Eric designed. And on the blog, you can download this PDF, which is called Just Easter Eggs. And you can enlarge an egg, you can use, you know, one little one if you like, it's up to you. But you can practice your free motion and transferring this egg to just a plain fabric square, put your batting and backing on, and try your hand at this sort of Zentangle meets free motion quilting technique. And you know, Easter's gonna be here in the next month or so, so you can kind of get a head start on making something that is kind of egg themed. And I'm gonna show you kind of where, where uh, Eric took this project. So here we have him, uh, you know, stitching over those designs. You can see he actually transferred this using a sulky iron-on transfer pen. So you can also do that method if the sticky Fabrisolvi is not for you, or, you know, if you're working with a fabric that cannot withstand washing, so the Fabrisolvi, the wash away stabilizer, isn't going to work for your fabric, you can use our iron-on uh, transfer pens to also transfer designs. So that's what he did. And then he's going over it with just a black thread and just going over those lines that he has transferred. 
and he went over them a couple of times. Now, if you want to just go over them once or you're working with the 12 weight or heavier weight thread, that's entirely up to you. So he kind of created an Easter basket full of eggs, but you could certainly just work with one of those eggs, try your hand at it, make it into a coaster or something like that, and then work on a larger piece. So after stitching those eggs with the black thread, he was kind of creating a coloring page. So then he used fabric paints to fill in all of these eggs and make them look all dyed different colors. So this is just kind of a fun take on doing some free motion work, but you could certainly add in all of these colors by using a blendables thread. We even have a thread, I think it's called Easter egg, so that would be perfect for this. And it's available in the 30 weight and I believe also the 12 weight. So at any rate, you could stitch um, or you could free motion quilt your egg using a one blendables thread and it would look like it's dyed um, and you wouldn't have to go doing the fabric painting technique. But this is just another fun artistic way to create a unique quilt block. So you can find this at blog.sulky.com. You can search Zentangle Easter Egg or just Easter and you will find this post and you can grab up those Easter eggs, print them on your fabric, sticky fabric solvy sheets or your stick and stitch sheets. And then like I said, make a simple quilt block. It doesn't even have to be pieced. It can just be your background fabric, your backing with your batting in between and try your hand at these great Easter eggs. So here's what his Easter basket looks like. I know, impressive. Look at all of those eggs. Um, so like I said, you know, start small, do one egg, make it into a cute little coaster or make an entire basket full of eggs or you could do a wreath of eggs. That would be really pretty. Um, so here are just four eggs that he did with one uh, layer of stitching and then coloring those in with fabric paints. So really a fun project that you can grab up and try your hand at free motion quilting and be sure to grab up some of these other notions that are going to make things easier for you. You know, the quilting gloves, the sewer's aid, make sure you have a pack of assorted quilting needles. Um, we have them at sulky.com. They have 75 11s as well as 90 14s which are going to help you sew a number of different fabric weights and types. So those are some really handy recommended notions for free motion. So I'm going to go through and make sure, Marsha says, do you have a link to the eggs? So those eggs are on that um, free motion quilting um, Easter egg project on the Sulky blog. I'll see if I can just reply to you with a direct link so you can go and grab it. But while you're at the blog looking for the free motion quilting FAQs with Eric, you can go in the search bar and search Easter eggs and it will definitely come up for you. Kathy says, I like having options for transferring the designs. Fantastic. All right. Barbara says, how much is the kit for the cards? I don't see it on the site. All right, so Barbara is talking about the kit for our In the Hoop greeting card session with Designs by Juju. So the kit, I believe the retail price of the kit is about $54 or something like that. But once you register for the session, you'll get a coupon code and use that at checkout and it will drop the price to $39.99. So be sure to grab up your coupon code. Once you register, you'll get a confirmation email it will also take you to a confirmation page once you register and your coupon code is going to be there. So be sure to use that coupon code so that the price will drop to $39.99. If you put it in your cart, once you go through the checkout process, then you will see that price drop for you. All right. Sheila has a great tip. She says you could sew out the eggs and then get the kids to color them in. Great project for the kids, especially over spring break when they need something to do. So that's a great, great idea. You could create some different kind of coloring page quilts for them and then have them sign their names 
and then make that into a larger quilt. That would be so fun. And what a great heirloom gift for someone. Um, you know, with Mother's Day coming up, that would be just the greatest gift that you could give to their mom. Um, so, so cute. What a great idea. All right. Please repeat where you download the egg patterns. So at the Sulky blog, if you're on the Sulky website, there's a link to the blog, or you can just type in blog.sulky.com and then search Easter eggs and it will come right up for you. And you'll see the Zentangle Easter eggs and there's a PDF for you that you can uh, print right on to your sticky Fabrisolvi sheets and transfer to your fabric. I know there's a few steps involved in grabbing that pattern, um, but that is where it lives. All right, let's see. Annette wants to know, do you have a specific thread for sergers? So we get this question quite a bit because there's a lot of thread out there that's labeled serger thread. And I kind of find that um, funny and frustrating at the same time because any thread can be used in your serger. It definitely depends on what you are serging and what type of fabric you're using. So if you're using a lighter weight fabric, you might wanna go with the 50 weight thread uh, if it's construction. Um, if you are doing decorative serging and you're gonna see those looper threads, maybe you're doing a wave stitch or something fun uh, with exposed seams like pin tucks or something like that, you could go even with a 30 weight cotton or even a 40 weight rayon or polyester, polydeco thread, um, so that the thread becomes that design element. You know, if you're doing exposed seams, you wanna see that thread and you want it to be pretty. So go with a blendables thread would look really cool in the loopers, and then a lighter weight thread in those needles so that you get a really strong um, seam. So those are my recommendations, but we also have a lot of serger education at sewingonline.sulky.com. We have an entire serger session that you can sign up for with Katrina Walker, who is one of the experts on sergers in the industry. And she's just really, really knowledgeable about using your serger for a lot of different things. So if you're signing up for that embroidery sewing session, you will also see um, right next to it, probably our serger sewing session. And that has tons of information about using sergers from threads to needles. I mean, when's the last time that you swapped out your serger needles? right? It is necessary. It's as necessary as swapping out your regular machine needles. And a lot of people just don't think about that because they don't use their serger as much as they would maybe use their regular sewing machine. So lots of great tips from Katrina and a wonderful project to do. That's a surge as you go table runner. We have kits for that available as well. That comes with beautiful thread, um, a variegated rayon, in fact. Um, so at any rate, I think you will find those uh, very useful. All right, Lori says, I love the blendables on the leaves. Let me see if I can find that one again. Nope, nope, there we go. She says, I assumed that that was a lot of thread changes. I know the blendables really gives you a great, great effect. I've got a 12 weight blendables here um, in some pinks and you know, a lot of the times too, when we're working on a quilt, the quilt doesn't just have one color to it. Yes, of course it can, um, but a lot of the times it doesn't. And so you can pick a blendables that has a range of those colors in it and get some really cool effects without ever having to change out or swap out your thread color. All right. Esther says, stitching these are intimidating for me. I know those Zentangle blocks are really detailed. So you certainly don't have to dive into free motion quilting with a pattern that is that extensive. You know, picking one of these 180 doodle quilting designs, you can see some are less sort of complicated than others. In the upper right corner of the book here, you can see those curvy, swirly designs. Um, you could just do one line of those as opposed to all four lines of each one of those swirls and just try it out until you get more confidence. Um, but 
Again, transferring these designs using that sticky fabric solvy, it's all going to help build your confidence and have a really stunning result. Uh, and you can feel really proud of it. Um, people are just going to be amazed that you did that um, just by moving that fabric yourself under the machine. So check out that book, 180 Doodle Quilting Designs. Um, and again, you know, grab up a thread assortment so that you can have fun and choose different thread weights and thread types. This is our giveaway today for one lucky viewer who's watching right now, uh, liking, sharing, um, you know, giving me those great emojis on the post today. One of you will win this doodle quilting thread assortment valued at over $32. So, um, you know, and these are great, great colors uh, as we welcome spring as well. You can do a little quilt sampler with lots of blues that you find in your stash um, and even add touches of metallic here and there. So I think you'll really have fun with it, um, especially if you've never uh, tried free motion before. It's intimidating to you. Uh, like she said, you know, it can't hurt to just make yourself maybe a 10 by 10 square of a quilt sandwich and just give it a go. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Okay, Victoria says, I have seen it, but never tried and would like to try it. So great. I hope that we are inspiring you today uh, to get out to your sewing machine and try something new or even try one of these new products, even if you've done free motion before and maybe you thought, hey, I'm not cut out for this or I can't grip the fabric that great. Um, so I'm just going to send all of my stuff to a long armor and they can finish the quilt for me. Well, I really want you to try these gloves or try that sewer's aid if the if the thread is, um, you know, not passing through the needle eye as well as you hope um, or you want to do those metallic little accents. Um, so give those a try and, and try it again because it's, there's really nothing more satisfying than making a, a quilt entirely yourself from start to finish. Instead of saying, okay, I'm done with the quilt top and now it goes to the long armor and then I get it back in a few weeks and um, either they bind it or I bind it and it's done. You know, it's so satisfying to quilt it yourself and have had a hand in every part of it. Um, so free motion can be really, really fun, especially for those of us who don't have that room for that big long arm machine um, to do a computerized design and all of those things for us. All right. Amy's talking about the Fabrisolvi. What about larger panels? Would you just stick it on the whole panel before or as you go? I would stick it on the whole panel if I have a wide enough roll of sticky Fabrisolvi. I'll just cover the quilt with it and then kind of plot out my design across the entire quilt and then work on, you know, either sections or blocks, depending on the design that I'm using, working from the center and going out and rolling up the excess as I go. And if you need to, the great thing about that sticky fabric solvy as well is that it's easily repositionable. So if you go to unroll the edges of your quilt and it has kind of folded on itself or something because of the sticker, you can just flatten out that part of the quilt, reposition that sticky Fabrisolvi um, spot and continue on. Um, so it makes it really easy to do it that way. Um, Kelly says, can it be torn away after stitching? So not really. The sticky Fabrisolvi, since it has that adhesive on the back, you cannot tear it away. It's not going to perforate along the stitching. Um, so if you don't want to wash your quilt when you're done or rinse away that stabilizer when you are done with your quilting. You can take a wet Q-tip, get it very, very saturated or a cotton swab and run it along your stitches. And that will kind of let the Fabrisolvi release. And so then you can just peel your sticker right off. Now, if you've done a lot, a lot of quilting, it's gonna be much more difficult to remove using that technique. But if you're doing, um, you know, larger kind of floral motifs or big swirls over a large quilt, 
then that'll be easier for you to just wet along your quilting stitches and then remove the rest of your Fabrisolvi that way. And then you might even be able to save it for a future use as well if you have big enough pieces that you're tearing away from your quilt. All right. I think that, okay, let's see. Oh, Nancy has taken a class from Eric. She says, when Eric does a beginner class, he has us doodle circles between two lines. So thank you. That's a really great exercise too for practicing. And I do want to mention that Eric has much more extensive free motion courses. I mentioned it at the top of today's episode, but I want to, you know, reinforce this, that his courses are called Fearless Free Motion. There's a Fearless Free Motion 1 and then a Fearless Free Motion 2. So if you want to take a more in-depth course with Eric virtually, you can sign up for Fearless Free Motion 1 or Fearless Free Motion 2. You can get these exercises. You can sew along with Eric while he's showing you, you know, um, right at the needle, some great videos. Uh, so you can really dive into free motion and have Eric sort of by your side virtually on your computer. Uh, so that's a really, really great resource. And you can find out all about those classes at sulky.com. Those classes are through sewdaily.com. So you won't find those at our sewingonline.sulky.com site. I know it's very confusing. We have so many websites, uh, but you know, there's a reason and a purpose for all of that. So if you want to take your free motion journey further or you're still feeling intimidated to even begin, be sure to sign up for one of our longer format free motion, fearless free motion courses with Eric Drexler. And I think that he really will take the fear out of it for you. All right. Well, I think I am caught up on all the questions. If you had a question and I didn't get to it, be sure to submit it at info at sulky.com. We are always here to answer your questions about Sulky products and projects. So uh, be sure to email us there if you have a urgent question and I didn't see it in the chat. Um, I want to be sure that we address it for you. So again, sign up for that free legacy webinar, Free Motion Doodling. That's another great resource and it's free. And you can check out how to sort of doodle quilt. Um, so if you're really interested in grabbing up this book, that free webinar is going to be a really great resource for you as you go through these quilting designs and want to apply those to quilts that you create. All right. And again, be sure to sign up for our sewing session with designs by Juju in the hoop greeting cards, which is going to be active next Tuesday. So next Tuesday, you could grab your design files, start watching the videos, go through all the card designs at your own pace, grab up your kit. They're going fast. They're telling me not very many kits are available. Um, so some of you must have grabbed them up today. And I thank you for that. All right. Have a great day, everyone. And again, National Quilting Month. So we are really going to be focusing a lot, a lot on quilting this month and bring your questions, comments, Start your first quilt. I'll be giving you some great patterns next Tuesday when we go through a log cabin quilt. I just gave you a little sneak peek of that. Um, and I will be showing you some more quilting techniques as we move on this month. So have a wonderful rest of your day and go forth and try out free motion, free motion, drop those feed dogs and have a good time with it. I'll see you next time on another So What. Have a great day.